Silver! Away! A fiery horse with the speed of light. A cloud of dust and a hearty high old silver. The Lone Ranger. Treaties were signed with the Indians in the early days of the western United States, but agents who used their public office for private gain soon destroyed the red man's faith in the white man's word. A new crisis arose, and the masked rider of the plains fought for justice on the side of the Indians. He broke the power of the politicians and restored peace and harmony to the frontier. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver, the Lone Ranger... Rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Indian country! There's going to be trouble! I'll Silver! Away! A heavy-set man with shrewd eyes and a coarse-featured, roughly-bearded face shouldered his way toward the bar in the cafe at Squaw City. His progress was watched with interest, and when it became evident that he was making his way toward two men who stood in conversation at one end of the bar, the room became silent. The elderly of the two men, hearing his approach, stopped talking and turned around. Looks like we got company, Fred. Miss Carver... Hey, that's him. I knew he'd be along. All right. Just take it easy. Let me do the talking. Mm Mm-hmm. Marsden? Right. I'm Carver. Heard of me? I think so. I wasn't sure you had. Thought maybe that was why you hadn't looked me up. Should I have? You're the fellow aims to rent grazing land from the Indians, ain't you? I am. How many critters you bringing here? Uh, Quite a few. Yeah? How much land will you need? I expect to rent a half a million acres. That much, eh? That would cost you something. Reckon it'll run you about $25,000. That's what I expect to pay. Good. When do I get it? You don't. Eh? The money goes to Chief Standing Elk. Oh, sure, that's all right. Of course it goes to him. But I'm his agent. You give it to me and I give it to him. Well, nice of you. But this time I'll save you the trouble. I don't think so. No? You're a stranger around here, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Likely you ain't acquainted with how things stand. But nobody rents from the Indians unless they do it through me. So I've been told. Oh, you knew that, huh? I've been told you've arranged the leases for quite a few of the outfits in Indian territory. I've fixed all of them. But the Indians never see the money. What's that? I understand your game, Carver. I understand it perfectly. You take the money and then you call on the Indians and feed them rot gut whiskey. By the time they're sober, they've signed over their land. Leaving you a good 90% profit. Now, just a second, Marsden. You'll hear me out. I know you've got a certain amount of influence with the authorities in Washington. 
I know you've got a gang of cutthroats and gun hands that'll do anything you tell them. And I know that up till now, the cattlemen have been afraid to call your bluff. But I don't scare. I deal with standing elk my way, and for all of me, you can go to blazes. So that's the way it is. Take it or leave it. I see. Made up your mind, eh? I have. No chance of your thinking it over and maybe deciding different? None in the world. Ah. Not too bad. Very glad I met you. Good night. <laughs> so that's Carver, eh? I thought you said he was tough. Look, Marsden. Uh -huh. You came to me and asked me to handle things for you. I said I would. I don't go back on my word. I'll ride out and see Standing Elk tomorrow. If I can, I'll get you that lease. Well? But I'm beginning to wish we'd never met up. Why? What's wrong? Marsden, when Carver makes threats, he's dangerous enough. But he didn't threaten. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. When he don't, watch out. <laughs> A week later, just at dusk, a masked man on a great white stallion drew his mount to a halt in a small grove not far from Squaw City. He was met there by a man in the uniform of a major in the United States Army. For several minutes, the latter spoke earnestly while the masked man listened. Then... So that's why you sent Tonto after me. When I saw him, I knew you were the only man who could handle this. Yes? I tell you, you are. Don't you think we know at the fort what Carver is? Of course we do. We've known it for the past two years, and we haven't been able to touch him. Why not? We've nothing on him. Arrest him for selling whiskey to the Indians. Yes? Who'll testify against him? The Indians? <laughs> They're not going to cut off their source of supply. What's Carver done about Marsden? Nothing. You sure? As far as I can be sure of anything where he's concerned. Marsden got his lease? He did. Paid standing elk himself, huh? No, but he's going to. He's gone back to Texas. I understand he's just one of a group of cattlemen. He'll return with the money, and his partners will follow with their cattle. I see. I suppose he'll pay standing elk in gold. Of course. Now, Major, don't misunderstand me. I think as little of Carver as you do. I want him brought to justice as badly as you do. But so far, you haven't told me a thing that could be used against him. He hasn't taken a step outside the law. But he will, just as surely as I'm talking to you. Yes? He's got to. If Marsden challenges him and gets away with it, he's finished. He'll never bluff another cattleman into hiring him as an agent. This dirty game he's been playing will be ended. So far, it's made him thousands. A man like Carver doesn't give up that kind of money without a fight. No, I imagine not. Well, will you help us? What measures are you taking? Oh, we're watching him as best we can, of course. But the fellow has influence, you know. We've got to be mighty careful. We'd like to make the arrest. But when we do, the evidence against him must be clear and binding. You think I can get that evidence, huh? I, uh, well, naturally, I remember the time our quartermaster had been embezzling army funds. No one else could have trapped him as cleverly as you did. Very well, Major. You will help. I will. If I hesitated, it's because I don't like to see the army behave as though it were afraid of a few crooked politicians. We're not exactly proud of the situation. But there's only one class of people that can avoid politics in one form or another. Yes? Those like yourself. Men who stand outside the law, either to aid it or fight it. Just one thing before I leave. And that? If I do this, if I see an opportunity to trap Carver, will you act if called upon? I will. You have my word on it. Good. I won't try to contact you at the post myself, of course. Any message from me will be sent through Tonto. The guard will have orders to admit him at any time, day or night. Then that's settled. You may, you may not hear from me soon, Major, but when you do, be ready for action. Come on, Silver. Come on. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh, steady, boy. Tonto. Uh, Get mounted. We ride. Here's Count. What we do? You know this fellow Carver? Uh, me know him. He lives at the old Willard place. He and that gang of hangers-on that follow him. Not right. Well, we're going to hunt out a place suitable for a camp as close to there as possible. Then we'll return here and pick up our gear. Uh, what matter? Carver's a crook, Himasabi. Everyone in the district knows it. It looks as though we're the only ones who'll do anything about it. Uh, Come on. I'll sit him up, there. Scout. Away. Two 
weeks went by, and still Carver had not shown his hand. But late one afternoon, a horseman reined in before Carver's headquarters, threw himself from the saddle, ran up the steps of the porch, and knocked on the door. Come in. Oh, you, huh, Bet? What's up? He came. Huh? The letter, Carver. The letter you said Morrison would write to Fred Baker. Oh, yeah. You saw it? Yeah, enough to make sure. <laughs> Good work. Here. Yeah. There's fifty dollars for you. You've earned it. Well, thanks, Carver. Anything else you want? Because if there ain't, I'll be riding back to town. Uh, one moment. Yeah. Look, Bet. You just made yourself fifty dollars right easy. Yeah. But you've done a good job, and I take care of the boys that helped me. Now, how'd you like to take on another job that ain't a great deal harder and collect yourself still more cash? Well, gosh, I'd like it fine. I can trust you, can I? I sure can. Any objection to doing something that gets you in bed with the law if it so happened you was caught? Would you back me up afterwards? Of course. <laughs> well, then why should I worry about the law with you on my side? <laughs> what do you want? That letter. The one from Marsden? Just so. Baker will have it to home, you know. I know, but I still want it. You mean break in and get it? You're not afraid of Baker and his wife, are you? Well, that depends. Yeah. It'll be easy enough to hold them up, and if they still got it, it'll be easy enough to make them hand over the letter. But it'd be a sense for them to identify me afterwards. Why, that ain't the kind of thing even you could cover up. <laughs> Bet you got me wrong. Huh? I don't want you to hold them up. Nothing like it. I want you to get that letter without their knowing about it. Go there after they're asleep tonight. I can tell you just where Baker keeps his papers. The door won't be locked, ain't ever locked. All you got to do is sneak in there, help yourself, and clear out. Oh. And afterwards, when you've delivered that letter to me... Yeah? You'll get 200. Four times what you earned just now. 200? Is that a promise? Sure. <laughs> Shucks, why didn't you say so right at the start? For that much cash, I'd steal the house and all. Late that night, Fred Baker awoke suddenly from a sound sleep. He listened for a moment. Then... Jane. Jane, wake up. Uh, wait. Is, is it morning? Oh, uh... Quiet and listen. I'm sure I heard something that woke me up, but now I don't. See if you can hear anything. But what? Just listen. No, I don't. Somebody in the next room. Your gun's on the dresser. I got it. Stand where you are. Who's in here? Did, did you hear me? I don't know. He went out the door. Stay back. Get up, boy. Get up. Get up. Right up for our shoot. Get up. Get up. He got away. Did you see him, Fred? Did he recognize you? I wouldn't swear to it. You mean? But I've got a good notion who it was just the same. Who? Bat Ricketts. That fellow I told you had been hanging around the past week till I couldn't get rid of him. Oh. Every once in a while, he does some of Carver's dirty work. But, but what could he have been after? Yeah, not cares, that's for sure. Yeah, what we got wouldn't tempt nobody. Come on, let's see what was took. That spurred his horse toward Carver's place. Come on, fella. Get a move on there. Get up, boy. Get up. But two shadowy figures were waiting to intercept him. You understand exactly what you're to do, Tyler? Mm. Make, it look, make it look like a common holder. Uh. Make it convincing. Take whatever of value he's carrying. Don't do it. I'll remain out of sight. You shouldn't have any trouble with him. But if anything goes wrong, I'll be here to back. What's that? It's him. Right. Back, Silver. Back, old fellow. You stand still, Scout. Stand still. You stop! Oh, 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 there. Don't shoot. You got cash? I ain't got a dime, Redskin. I swear to you, I ain't got a dime. You stand still. Me search him. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. Bat tried to explain the holdup to his employer and... Whatever I tell you, it was just one of them things. How was I to guard against it? it well, it could have happened to anybody. But it had to happen to us. Would you know him again? Does he want to stand on Elk's engines? Oh, I couldn't tell. Blast it, why didn't you have the sense to give him the cash right off without making him search you? I'd have made it up to you. That fool engine didn't want anything but money. You took what you handed him and glad to clear out. Well, I, now I... he's got the cash in the letter. Ain't no earthly use to him, but I'd give my right arm for it. What do you figures in it that makes it so important? Why, that's the letter tells when and how Marsden's going to get Stanton Elk's rent money to him. The 25000 Of course. How do you know? Stands to reason, don't it? Marsden has to deliver it. Baker's the one that made the deal with Stanton Elk, ain't he? Marsden ain't never even met the chief. At least he's got to tell Baker where to meet him. And there uh, ain't no other way to find out? You think they'd talk with the Indian Territory, the hideout for outlaws from a dozen states? What were you planning on? To get that cash. What do you think? Uh-huh. Make Stanton Elk think Marsden was trying to cheat him. Can't you Can't you keep a lookout for Marsden? Yeah. He's likely to enter the Indian Territory anywheres. There's just one thing sure. He won't come to Squaw City first. Gosh, I'm sorry, Carver. Wait. I didn't... Who's this? Huh? Were you followed? To let Baker see you? Gee, Carver, I don't... Inside with you. What the... Max! You let go, Rick! Make a break, Redskin, and I'll blast you. Hey, what is Carver. it? Carver! Hey, this is the Redskin that held me up. Eh? I caught him right afterwards, Carver. I was close enough to see what had happened. I called to this fellow here a couple of times, but he didn't hear me, so I followed him. Did the engine get a chance to hide anything he stole? He didn't. Yeah, give back what you took. You Hand don't... it over. Um, uh, here... Yeah. Cash. That's mine. But there was a letter. Holding anything back, Redskin? Um, your letter. Yeah, that's it. I thought it belonged to this man. A bet? Oh, uh, well, it's for me, stranger. He, uh, he was just delivering it for a fella. Oh. Hey, look, stranger. You don't know it, but you've done me a real big favor. I might get make it right by you. But, uh, well, ain't it kind of a funny thing for a masked man to do? Hand back cash? What do you think? Oh, no offense, mister, no offense. I just couldn't help wondering. Uh-huh. Well, uh... <laughs> with that mask, I feel... Well, you've got a reward coming, and I... You little hold me! Hey, 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 making a break for it. Watch out, I'll get him. Missed! Get him up, Scout! He's not going to escape me! Wait! That hombre ain't waiting for nobody. <laughs> Let him go. We got the letter, and he never waited for me to pay him. <laughs> we don't care if he never comes back. Oh, Tyler, you played your part perfectly. Uh, 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 me fool them plenty, huh? Uh, uh, I didn't even suspect uh, I fired over your head. Uh, 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 well, back to camp, Tyler. It won't be long now till the game's played out. Uh, Get him up, Scout. Harold Silver, away! <laughs> Major Willis, commandant of the army post a short distance from Squaw City, had waited for a word from the masked man. Finally, however... Well? The Redskin insists on seeing you, sir. Says his name is Tonto. Shall I send him on his way, sir? If you do, I'll have you thrown out of the army. Bring him in here at once. Yes, sir. This way, Redskin. Uh. Come in, Tonto. You, close the door. Don't let anyone interrupt us. Yes, sir. Tonto... What's been happening? Has your friend succeeded? Did you bring me a message? Uh, me bring message. Fine. Out with it, man. Uh, you listen. Close. Two days after Tonto's interview with Major Willis, Carver stood beside his horse, giving orders to the group of men surrounding him. Shut up and listen. 
Go ahead, boss. Are you all armed and ready for anything? Yeah, yeah. Lord. Did you prepare the hoods I ordered? I got mine right here, Carver. I did, you fool. Huh? Put it under your shirt anywhere. Keep it out of sight till it's needed. The rest of you do the same. All right. How soon do we start? Right away. You can mount. <laughs> I'll take the lead. We ride west, then south. That'll keep us clear of the travel trails. We can't afford to have anybody asking questions. Where do we find Marsden? He's entered the reservation by way of Willow Gulch in the north. We should cut his trail just after sundown. Yes, sir. Ready? Yes, and come on. Yes, Get up there. Come on. Yes, Carver and his band were not the only ones to ride out to meet Marsden's party. Young Fred Baker, Marsden's representative at Squaw City, also rode across the Indian Territory to meet the rancher. Leaving before Carver and following a more direct route, it was afternoon when he first added Marsden's two covered wagons, escorted by a half dozen horsemen. Hi there! Hi! Get up, boy! Get up! Marsden! Right here. Whoa, boy, whoa, whoa there, whoa, whoa there. Howdy, Fred. Get your horse on back and climb up here with me. <laughs> Marston. I'll take your horse, mister. Oh, thanks. Uh, come on, boy. Look, Marston, I got bad news. <laughs> you can tell it up here in the wagon just as well as you can down there afoot, can't you? I think Carver knows where we are. Yeah? Somebody stole your letter from my house. I'm just about sure it was one of Carver's men, but there weren't no way of proving it. And you'd already left Texas. I, I couldn't get word to you. What about it? What about it? You, you can ask that knowing the way he feels. Why, he'll make a stab at the gold just as sure as you're born. <laughs> you worried about that? <laughs> huh? Ain't you? Why should I? Say, somebody tip you off already? Did you leave the gold somewhere? Nope. Got it right here in this wagon. Then what in blazes? Oh, shucks, young fella. You fret too easy. Let's go, man. Right. Get up that. Come on. Get up there. Get up. Get up. Night was falling when Carver saw Marsden's wagon silhouetted against the sky as they crawled along a distant ridge. Carver raised his hand and his men drew rein. There they are. You sure, Carver? It's them. Nobody else would be going in that direction. They're heading right for Stanton Elks Village. Now what? Without your hoods. Yeah. Yeah. Feel like that smother in the doggone thing. Everybody got his face covered? Yeah. Yeah. Just remember this. Don't use names in front of them. No kill unless they put up a fight. But if they do want to argue, shoot to kill. All right, come on. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Fred Baker still shared the lead wagon seat with Marsden, who held the reins. Get up there. Come on, keep moving. How much farther to the village? Quite a ways yet. Standing elk expecting us? Uh-huh. Can we get there before midnight? Oh, sure. Well, then we'll push on. Get up. Get up there. Marston. Huh? Somebody coming. Yeah? Funny time of night for horsemen. Ain't engines, are they? I don't know. Wait. Right up, right up, right up. Carver. I think so. All right, fellas, pull up. Who? Pull that boy. Who? What are you doing? We ain't got a chance. We ought to run for it. Well, what's the use? But you can't... Could not run them with wagons, could we? You're just going to hand over the gold? <laughs> well, we'll see. What do you fellas want? We're in a hurry. You just think you are pulling that hoods to cover your faces, eh? What's the idea? <laughs> Shame to show yourselves? It'll be enough of that. You got 25,000 in gold with you. Don't try to deny it because we know it to be a fact. Just hand it over. Now you blast it. Take it easy, Fred. Hey, fork over. A hold up, eh? What do you think? I just wanted to make sure. You're going to let him sit there and palaver all night, boss? He turns over the cash in just 30 seconds or he stops the lid. Well, that sounds definite enough. <laughs> but I don't... Don't be a fool, I... Marsden. These fellas mean business. We'd run for it. Maybe we'd have got away, but we didn't. There's nothing to do now but pay up. Well, 
Maybe you're right. Glad to see you got the sense to admit it. That's the cash there in that box as your feet drop it to the ground. Tell your men not to get notions about slapping leather. Chucks, they won't bo- Hey, who's that? Boss, we gotta clear out. Yeah, if we don't. Shut up, get... grab that box. Drill them fellas just as soon as they get in range. Come on. All right, inside there. Let them have it. Right. Come on, Every one of you is under arrest. Resist at your own risk. The soldiers was inside the covered wagon. There's a couple of dozen of them. Drop your gun. We can't run for it, boss. Some other fellas got us cut off. Oh, 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 before you what? Get down from that saddle. I'd like a look at you without that hood. Look over me. There. I was right. It's Carver. Well, thought it might be you, Carver. Blast you. You'll pay for this trick. I'll show you. You can't frame me and get away with it. You framed yourself. And I think I can promise you, Carver, that you'll be well taken care of in the future. In jail. How'd you know we were here? It was laying for us. If it wasn't, you wouldn't have been hiding in them wagons. That was the masked man's idea. You're the fella caught that engine one night, ain't you? I... Hey, this is the very same redskin. Right. But what in the... I had to know what Marsden's plans were. I had to know in order to get in touch with him and warn the soldiers. But I wanted you to get that letter so that you'd go ahead with your scheme. And Tato and I arranged a way to do it without making you suspicious. If I could just have the chance to shoot it out with you, mister. You won't. Just let me meet him face to face. Just give me an even start and I... And you'd be lucky to get out alive. I tell you... Because the man you challenged... Is the Lone Ranger. Lone Ranger? The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.